Hello friends, I'm the Professor. You haven't seen me in a while, and there's a reason for that. You see, we were, well, planning on moving. Uh, we were expecting to move, and we have to move this entire place, because we own the house, and the house is a trailer, and we would have to move it, and we were expecting to do that sometime, oh, actually fairly soon. But a rather important part of the deal fell through, and so now we're looking at our moving schedule being, instead of sometime this year, being sometime maybe in 2022, 2023, maybe then. So, yeah. And in the process of all that stuff, some of our equipment has disappeared, particularly one of our better cameras. So I thought I would uh, just, uh, you and me, just have a chat. A lot of stuff has happened since the last time I was on here. Uh, the deal between Microsoft and Bethesda has been finalized, so now Microsoft owns the Elder Scrolls and the Doom franchise and well basically everything that was under uh, Bethesda, ZeniMax, all that. The ZeniMax board has uh, been dissolved. That's pretty normal for that to happen with a buyout. And less moon beds. The guy who basically made Star Trek what it was on CBS All Access before it that died was on that board and it makes me wonder was his influence affecting Bethesda we'll see as uh, time goes on with uh, future games from Bethesda and what happens with uh, the next Elder Scrolls, Starfield, and any other games that Bethesda produces. We'll see if that changes anything. If he had some sort of influence on that, because he had a major influence on Star Trek, on CBS All Access. He, he may have big influence on Star Trek Discovery, and it wasn't a good influence. And so we'll see how that goes. Um, some other things have also happened since then. The update for Anthem, that uh, the new update that Anthem was going to get, well, that's dead. And overall, the whole idea of the live service game has pretty much fizzled out. There are still some live service games coming out, but the whole premise of live service games is pretty much fizzled because of what happened with Anthem, what's happening to Marvel's Avengers. That game is still just dying on the vine. Anthem is, well, Anthem is just staying the way it is. It's not getting any better, and I would be surprised if the game was still going in a year. It'll probably be get, get shut down. If enough, there's probably enough players to justify keeping it running for now, but if they don't do anything with it in that, in within a year, I would say they would probably shut it down. And so, BioWare is now focusing most of their work now on the next Dragon Age. And multiplayer for that game has been axed. And any of the live service elements that EA had wanted or mandated before are pretty much gone. So, as I said, the whole live service thing has pretty much fizzled out. It may not be gone forever, but it is fizzling out. And then there's the whole thing with FIFA 
and the whole uh, debacle with that where EA employees were selling you know team cards for that game at extremely high prices and the whole controversy over that it's just highlighting a lot of the problems with the way Electronic Arts implements a live service. Now, there's no problem with games being a live service, but it's how it's implemented, how they do it, and the way FIFA and the FIFA Ultimate Team is handled is like an, a casino. It, it, it simply is. It's simply online gambling. But in a video game and EA really needs to suffer a major blow here when it comes to this they they need to understand that this business model the way that they are operating it is not going to be profitable for them that yeah they're making money but at what cost at what cost they are exploiting people who have, you know, addictions to gambling. They are exploiting you know, young kids who don't understand how to handle money well, who, who rack up huge bills on their parents' credit cards. And they need to stop. They need to stop before, before they really piss somebody off the wrong way who has the power to enact regulation that could really mess things up for everybody. Because you see, there, there, there is a legitimate way of doing microtransactions and, and live service of games where the game itself can be free or very low, or low price, and the game can be free and it can be funded through microtransactions. For, you know, there are legitimate ways of doing this. And there are illegitimate ways of doing it. And what will likely happen is there will be an overreaction by lawmakers and it will hurt everybody else. And EA, EA is in danger of making that happen if they don't get a handle on themselves. They don't stop and it could really cause some serious harm to the industry, to the free-to-play model, which there's a lot of games out there that actually use the free-to-play model correctly, and they benefit well from that. And then there are some games that don't. And then there are games that use microtransactions completely the wrong way, like games like FIFA. And... If they continue, lawmakers are going to step in. They're going to not really understand what they're seeing. They're going to overreact, and it's going to turn out to be bad for the rest of us. We've also recently seen a rise of some really great indie studios, indie titles actually popping up lately, so, with some really good visuals to them. You know, there's the uh, Black Myth that came out of China um, that's based on the story of you know, Journey to the West. That looked incredible. And there's some other, other new stuff that's been coming up. One in VR from a company that's been around for some time. And the thing is, what's happening is the tools that are available to these developers is getting better. So there's the Unreal Engine, Unreal Engine 4, and soon Unreal Engine 5 that will be in the hands of developers and those tools are free. They don't cost anything to the developers except for royalty fees after they earn a certain amount of money. So they're getting better tools in their hands and they're able to make better games. So they don't need to have as big a um, development team they don't need as many resources in order to produce a game that is or that looks or feels like a triple-a game and we're starting to see a lot of indie games 
that are coming out that are of triple A quality. And this is a good thing for the industry. Uh, we're starting to see new big top studios emerge that are just small groups of really dedicated, really talented artists producing some stuff that looks like it was made by a huge development team when it's actually maybe four or five people. And we're seeing some amazing stuff. And also seeing um, more work done in the VR. VR is another thing that's been really seeing a renaissance lately. You know, some people blow off VR mainly because of the cost, but VR has actually done very well, especially last year. VR did extremely well, and it did doing even better. That's mainly due to the Oculus Quest and the Quest 2. Those being standalone headsets, and also a lot of the new headsets that are out now that you can use with a PC. There's the HP Reverb 2, the Valve Index, which has been selling like hotcakes, and you know, another new headsets that are currently in development. There's a lot of new headsets in development, so VR is not dead. If anyone tells you VR is dead, they don't know what's going on in the VR space. Uh, VR is seeing a renaissance right now. We are, it, it's one of those technologies where when it first came out, it was very much in its infancy and it had a long gestation period. It took a while for developers and hardware makers to actually start getting it right. And now we're getting into the phase to where the game developers are really getting a handle of how to do VR games properly. And VR headsets are starting to get really good. We're starting to see add-ons for headsets for face tracking. Or we're seeing headsets that have face tracking built in that are in the works coming out. So we're seeing some serious innovation in the world of virtual reality. It's going to be changing a lot of things. Uh, one of the things that we're, another thing we're seeing is we're seeing more and more VR being used for VTubers. I mean, look at me. Uh, I'm not VR, but I'm going to be. Yes, I'm announcing now that uh, sometime in the very near future, me. The professor. I'm going VR. Yes, I'm going to be that way into the virtual reality space. Now, at first, it's going to be basic, and over time, I will be transitioning to full body VR, full motion. But for now, it'll be just just basic VR. I may go for a new look. I don't know. Maybe. Possibly. I mean, I do like my beard as I... My new beard. My new look. But... Uh, we shall see. We shall see where things go. In the PC gaming space, it's been a really bad time to try and build a PC. Your best bet would be to go with a PC builder like Redux, which doesn't mark up the parts pricing. They sell their parts at MSRP, and then you just pay like a $7,500 or $100 fee for building and testing the system. But actually buying parts, it's very difficult now. One of the main reasons why this is happening is because a lot of companies scaled back development or production because of the impending pandemic. They didn't expect demand to shoot up as high as it did. And so you have a shortage. There's only a few companies in the world that actually make pure silicon crystals used for the making of CPUs and GPUs. Only a few actually, like, maybe two companies 
and there's only two major companies, Samsung and TSMC in Taiwan, who actually produce a lot of chips used by AMD and NVIDIA. And so there's a shortage. And at the same time, people are buying parts like crazy. Well, people want to people want to accuse crypto miners of being the reason why you can't get a graphics card right now and that's not really true crypto miners actually account for a small percentage they don't go through cards that quickly they don't buy up cards that quickly most of them if they're doing something like bitcoin they're using dedicated hardware like an asic machine they're not using a GPU. If they're doing, if they're doing something like Ethereum, they will be using a GPU. But they don't buy up cards that quickly. What's going on is that a lot of consumers are buying up the cards and they're they're getting sold quickly. At the same time, there's scalpers that are using bots to check when sites have stock and then they immediately start buying them in quick droves and this is something that the retailers have been trying to fight they've been changing their security features on their websites to try and compensate for this but the scalpers adapt quickly and so it's it's hard to be able to get anything online right now that's PC related except for certain parts. Intel chips are a little easier to get but that's mainly because they're not in as high a demand as, as AMD CPUs right now. Uh, Nvidia cards are in high demand. AMD cards are a little easier to get but they're still they're still weapons grade on Optanium at the moment again because of demand and scalpers who are putting them up on eBay for much higher price than their MSRP and then you got retailers that are like massively increasing the prices the prices of these things are just super stupid right now so it's not a good time to buy parts and build a PC you can still get um, RAM you can still get storage uh, relatively easily, but CPUs, GPUs, some motherboards, not easy to obtain right now. So your best bet is, and I, I don't usually recommend pre-builds, but I've been hearing a lot of good things about Redux, and this is not a paid sponsor ship. I've been hearing a lot of good things from them. Jay's Two Cents recommended them because they... Uh, they don't mark up the prices of their components they don't, and then they only charge like a $75 a building fee so something like Redux would be a good option for getting a machine I usually don't recommend pre-builds I recommend almost always to build your own machine but in this case until the market stabilizes and and everything until the companies can offer enough supply to, for the demand that's out there that will sometime be in 2022 maybe 2023 I mean, maybe by the time we get this place moved maybe then the market will go back to normal hopefully hopefully anyway that's what's been going on. That's um, been going on since the last video I've done. So, I'm the professor. Uh, next time, I'll be talking about some interesting new things happening in the gaming industry. Uh, basically, a lot of some stuff with esports, uh, other other subjects and also be doing some experiments with VR. So look forward to it and I'll see you all next time.